Okay, so welcome everyone and it will be great to know who's here. So feel free to type in in the right side and um, say hi or ask a question if you already have a question prepared for Lucy. How this is going to go? Hi, morning. Yolanda and Karina, great to have you here. I'm going to give you a short introduction of Lucy. That she's a fantastic writer and a good friend. And just we are so happy to have her on board, especially that she's, if you had no idea yet, she's one of the editors of the book. And I'm looking for the book. Um, we are preparing the second edition of how to uh, scale up from the base up. And this is the first edition. The second one will be ready somewhere uh, mid end of October. Everyone attending the conference are going to get the PDF. So stay tuned. We saw we had the preview. It looks fabulous. It's really, really interesting. Yeah, it's really, really great design. So stay tuned for that. Um, and hey, we have Deborah as well. More people. Hi, Don't hi. be shy. Just right there. Hi, everyone. So without further ado, let me just tell you a little bit uh, about Lucy. And um, Lucy is actually on a mission to make business writing clear, simple, and efficient. And uh, she created LUC, where she's working with companies and nonprofits and help them define, help them find, develop, and actually share, tell their stories. She's also um, helping companies communicate more effectively through writing, editing, translating, and of course, training. And she's also ghostwriting uh, and writing books um, and actually everything from tweets to books, <laughs> you name it, everything that's there. And funny enough, she actually started with the scientific writings, if I'm, if I'm correct, right, Lucy? And then she, she just keeps on adding to her CV. So now she's writing about um, science, of course, very dear to her heart, uh, sustainability, business, and much more. And I know she's uh, a very, very uh, sociable person. So I'm going to share here her contact details because you can, I'm going to edit them a little bit. You can email her or you can uh, check out, definitely you need to check out her website, LinkedIn, connect with her. And if you want to see something funny, go to her TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, I have 20 whole followers. It's great. <laughs> it's my new favorite thing. It's where the happy place is. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, not only just go to Facebook, because what I love about her Facebook page is every Friday she has a new word that I'm always learning something. <laughs> so definitely do that. It is favorite word Friday today. So if anyone's got a brilliant word, share it with me. I need some good <laughs> candidates. I have grumble in my head. Grumble. Grumble's a good word. <laughs> Anyway, okay. So what I'm going to do now, actually, I'm going to stop my, I'm going to leave this one and give the screen. I'm going to start saying floor screen <laughs> to Lucy. How do uh, I present? If you look down, you're going to see a screen that yeah. at this point is cut. The oh, moment yeah. I'm leaving the, the session, you'll be able to share that. Please do ask all your questions in the chat. I'm going to keep track of them. And 15 minutes before the end, I'm going to pink Lucy and pop up. <laughs> she needs to close her, her slides so I'll be able to, to join and ask the questions. 15 minutes, right, people. This is going to be speedy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We can make okay. just 10 minutes in that case. <laughs> that will okay. good. Well, let's see how many people, how questions we have. Right. I hope this works. Hello, everyone. Cantankerous is such a great word. Okay, I'm going to see if... Hang on, I need to, I'm a total technophobe, not really, a little bit of a technophobe. Um, and let's see if, oh, what is happening? Hang on, is this working? Yeah, is this working? Oh, I did it! Okay. <laughs> oh, I can't seem to have it. Okay, hang on. Sorry. For some reason, it doesn't want to do this. I can't see the questions and the screen at the same time. Oh, come on. Okay, hang on. I'm really sorry about this, guys. It's just going to be just a minute while I figure this out. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. 
last time. Otherwise, we're going to have it like this. Does this work? Do you see this? Okay, do you see this? Okay, are people seeing the slides? This is the question. And then I will start. Veronica, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see this slide? Okay. If you're scaling a business, and I'm guessing you are because you're here at base, uh, becoming an author could help you. Um, and we're gonna talk about how in this session. First, I wanna get ready. So do you have something to write with and something to write on? Because you'll be taking some notes. Um, great. Let me double check if this is actually working. Is this working, people? Great. Groovy. Okay. So, uh, Veronica gave me an introduction already, so I won't bore you with who I am slash used to be. Don't compare the pictures, oh my goodness. Um, I write and edit books these days and other stuff. I've been doing all sorts of things um, and edited, I, I think I've stopped counting how many books I've edited now. Um, but this year I've written two books and the most recent ones for <laughs> quite a notorious UK entrepreneur. Um, the books I've been working on have been on all sorts of topics. Um, making money in property using other people's money, um, opportunity, um, building a successful digital marketing, marketing agency, all sorts of stuff. So really interesting things. Um, and I have seen the, sort of the business of book writing and the purpose of book writing in the context of business from lots of different angles. So I thought it would be really interesting to share with you now. So I'm going to talk about what great writers do, what I do, and what you could do. I say could because there are guidelines that people share, but there are no rules here. So be an anarchist. We'll get to that. Um, we're going to talk about five. <laughs> now, <laughs> this is going to be really, really um, ambitious. We're going to talk about five things. I think there are five steps to becoming an author to help you scale your business. The first is to read, the second is to plan, write, edit, and publish. Um, nice list of chapters here, but it's really gonna look a bit more like this. So we're gonna skip through the read section. We're gonna focus on planning because that's the biggest, most important part of this. Writing is also very important. Editing is also very important. Publishing, less important, just because there are basically two things you can do. Um, and I'm not going to go into the details of that, but there are lots of people who can. So I'm just going to do a quick check. Can you still see everything? Are we still good? Is it still working? Um, does anyone have any questions at this point? Where are we up to? <laughs> I'm behind already. It's hilarious. Okay, right. So writing is a lot of work. It's a lot of work writing a book. And so uh, I think the most important thing to realize is that the payoff will probably be great if you get this right, um, but don't fool yourself into thinking this is gonna be easy. Writing a book is a huge undertaking. Um, it takes some people decades, most people not. But just to give you a bit of a comparison, it's like writing 2,300 tweets or 900 emails, or 140 blog posts. Um, is it worth it? Yes, if you do it well. Margaret Atwood in her masterclass, I don't know if anyone has masterclass, but it's absolutely brilliant, and I wholeheartedly recommend it. Um, it's about 200 euros a year, and I have had lessons from all the very, very best writers and screenwriters and all sorts of amazing people. Um, yeah, Lara, I love it too. It's absolutely brilliant. So in, in her masterclass, Margaret Atwood says, there are, there are four things that can happen when you write a book. It could be a great book and you make loads of money. 
It could be a bad book and you make loads of money. It can be a great book and you make no money. Or it can be a bad book and you make no money. And she says, and I completely agree with this, you want to avoid the last option. The others are okay because a great book, whether it makes money or not, is a great thing to have done. It's a great achievement. It's a great accolade. Um, but a bad book, if you make money, okay. You know, there's a reason you did it. Bad book, make no money, don't do it. So your focus has to be on avoiding that situation. But I want to focus on making money here. And I think there are different ways of making money with a book. Um, and in this context, I want to talk about income in a bit of a broader sense, because when it comes to scaling a business, books can help you not only with income, which would probably be loose change compared to what a scaling business makes, um, but it's more like the intangible benefits like reputation, awareness, credibility, customers, employees, um, generating leads, all that kind of stuff that will really help you scale your business. It's almost like a marketing tool. So everything I'm going to talk about sort of applies regardless of what kind of income. So bear this in mind. It's kind of a broader definition of income. Um, and it's good to think about what you want and what you're expecting from writing a book. Um, are we still good? Everything's still working? Okay. I want to tell you about a couple of examples of books I've worked on recently um, because they have different results in this sense. The first is a, a Google endorsed digital marketing agency founder, real character, Italian guy huge personality, um, mixed MMA champion and entrepreneur who turned up in the UK 25 years ago, couldn't speak a word of English. Amazing guy. So he has a great story, rags to riches, worked really well for his niche. Um, and he, he sits on sort of the, the cusp of business and personal development. And his specific idea was to write a book about how to set up and scale a, a digital marketing agency. Um, and he did this using his story. And it was a huge hit when he published it. I, I'm, I'm not talking um, Fifty Shades, a great international bestseller, but he made quite a lot of money from selling it. But what, what really made a difference to him, uh, I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago, almost the first anniversary of publishing the book. And he said he has made at least six figures from publishing this book. In, in these intangible ways, getting customers, making new business partnerships. And that that didn't come from selling copies. Um, so as an entrepreneur, I also, uh, an entrepreneur I also write for, I'm, I've got a big contract with him at the moment. He works in property, training, production, all sorts of stuff, fingers in lots of pies. Um, he's published 15 books now, and so he's we've started working together because he wants to up the production, <laughs> a bit like James Patterson, although oh, business. Um, and he makes quite a lot of money from selling the books themselves. Actually, it's not just um, not just the the other benefits that he gets, but he does get a lot of other benefits. And one of the big media he uses is. Um, audiobooks so he he does an audio version of each book this is not to be taken lightly i've been doing voiceovers for a course recently and oh my goodness is it a lot of work so also something to bear in mind um but people love it takes you to new audiences and he uses the launch of his books to give people incentives to give them bonuses he has huge communities on social media um, and you know supporter programs and that kind of stuff and so he really uses his books as part of his overall what he calls his business ecosystem he chops up the content he's very good at repurposing content and we'll talk about that briefly later but he chops it all up and uses bits and pieces in one of his podcasts or youtube channel or facebook lives instagram all, all sorts of stuff like that um, and the, mo the most recent book I've been working on for this notorious entrepreneur, his main business has been paused because of the pandemic. And he's, he's kind of obsessed with, with sharing his knowledge, with emptying his brain and, and helping other people with it. And so he said, I really want to write another book. And so I've been helping him with that. 
it, it involved you know we did have one day together before lockdown but then it's been lots of phone calls back and forth on email um and it's going to be published this year so we'll see how that comes out i think it's going to be quite a big hit that one actually so uh right off the bat i want to have let's have a reality check here hopefully we're still good um you need to be realistic about writing a book if you're in it from for the straight income of selling copies um in 2018 there was there was this really sad guardian article where a bunch of famous authors uh, put together a kind of petition to to publishers to pay people more because <laughs> it's something like the average um the average income of a, of a full-time author is 11,500 euros a year six six euros 28 an hour if you base <laughs> i don't know how they calculated that people take varying amounts of time to write but anyway the point is publishing companies don't pay very much for books um, novels business books non-fiction i mean there's a bit of a difference but actually it's roughly you know it, it's not a great picture so publishing a book you need to think about that and bring in these other benefits if it's about if it's about supporting you scaling your business um so I'm going to focus on these intangible benefits, credibility, showcasing your company, that books like Talk Like Ted are, are great ways to, to boost a brand or, you know, you might want to talk about a movement or an idea. Think of it outside of yourself, but also if you want to gain credibility personally and professionally, this is a great way to do it. So I'm skipping through. Oh, and and. A lot of people describe books as kind of um, epic leaflets that that you can use to advertise your company, and I, I get that. But let's put a little bit more effort <laughs> into it than that. Anyway, um, as I said, there are rules, and I think it's it's really, really, really important to do the very best that you can to make the book great. I think there is zero excuse for it being bad it, a book should be excellent and the very best that you can make it um, and we're gonna that's what this is going to focus on how, how to help you make it good but that doesn't mean you have to do it the way everybody else does you know I, I think about sort of the analogy of cooking writing versus cooking and when I cook I'm really chaotic I just throw all the ingredients in and, and I hope for the best Writing is not like baking. There isn't a specific formula. There's not a specific recipe or, you know, you don't have to time it down to the minute. This is all about what fits you better, what your tastes are, what ingredients you have. So think of it that way and be prepared to uh, to break the rules. Um, if you've got questions, I'm going to flick back and forth to the comments to see if I'm missing anything. So if you do have questions pop them in and we can look at them as we go ahead. <laughs> so we're getting to part one now, which is reading. And I won't talk about this for too long because I think everybody reads a lot. So I want to ask you a question. What's the last book you read and how many stars would you give it? Share me some books. I need some, I need some ideas for my uh, reading list. I'll tell you mine. Um, I just finished for a book club I'm in. Uh, the Collector of Lost Things, which was cold and smelly and dark and depressing. And I gave it a very generous three stars. Phil Knight, Shoe Dog, four out of five. Four out of five is a good rating. Okay. Ken Follett, World Without End. I haven't heard of that. Four stars. Four, four, okay, there are people, have a look at the chat because there are four star books here and four star books are worth picking up. The Silent Patient. Oh, I think you told me about that, Veronica. That's on my list already. Yes. Cool. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad to hear you're reading because reading is the most important thing you need to do if you want to write a book. Um, why? Oh, famous quote from Stephen King. If you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all others. Read a lot and write a lot. And I'm not just to be clear, I'm not suggesting that you quit your business and become a writer. <laughs> but if you're going to write a book, that does actually make you a writer. 
Um, and in order to write well, you need to read a lot. Stephen King is absolutely right. So there are reasons. I think the first is that you learn what you like by reading a lot. I read a lot of really random stuff. And I know very clearly that I prefer to read intelligent, simple, humorous writing. Um, I love Kurt Vonnegut, George Orwell, Roald Dahl, Margaret Atwood are among my favorites. Um, and I know I try to emulate elements of their style in my writing. Um, also helps you expand your vocabulary. I don't think it's a good idea to sit with a dictionary and use the most complicated words you can. It's a terrible idea. It alienates your audience. Simple language is always the best. And my rule is always if there's a if there's an Anglo-Saxon version of a word, use it. Um, so instead of enable or allow and trying to figure it out which one it is, just say let. It's always the best example of that. Um, it gives you ideas. So by reading especially if it's outside your normal comfort zone, you'll learn new things and that will spark ideas for you. And these will loop back into your writing and enrich it, make it better. Um, and it, oh, I am, sorry, I've just seen All Amongst the Barley, five, five stars, Debs, that's really good. Thinking of ending things, two and a half out of five, yeah. Okay, this is from Fedor Olsen, oh, interesting. Five stars. God, this is exciting. I am on Goodreads. I'm really bad at updating it. But I do you know what? Yes, you can follow me and then I will make sure that I update my Goodreads. Um, and it also makes you feel good. There's loads of research. If you Google it, it's some really interesting stuff. I think there's a really great um, New York Times article about it. There's loads of research showing that reading increases your quality of life. And it doesn't have to be sort of in a bath with a glass of wine and a book. It's actually just generally, just sitting down reading, um, escaping into that other world, regardless of what kind of book it is. Um, so I, I have some top tips for writing. Don't waste your time on something bad. Life is too short to read a bad book. If you get a chapter in and you think, this is dreadful and it's not gonna get any better, and you know by then. I knew by the first page of Fifty Shades. I, I have, somebody gave me secondhand copies. I'm gonna make art out of them. But you know, almost immediately, if it's going to be dreadful. If it's well written and you're not sure, keep keep plugging at it. But don't waste your time on something bad. Um, Goodreads ratings actually are really good. I always check them out. Four stars is a pretty good um, indicator that the book's going to be worth reading. Um, Sometimes reading something bad helps, though, because I can get major imposter syndrome if I've had a, a spate of reading people like Salman Rushdie. Um, then I need to pick up something terrible. Carrie Fisher wrote a great book, actually, called Postcards from the Edge, which I wholeheartedly recommend. It's a solid three stars. So enjoy the experience of reading is the next thing. It doesn't have to be hard work. Kick back with the slippers on. Um, read hard copies because it's good for the soul. And if they're secondhand, they emit this um, uh, molecule called vanillin and it smells delicious and it's actually good for you to smell that. Uh, take notes. Marginalia look lovely, but I'm terrified and I don't write in my books. But if you want to write in your books, do it. Uh, use post its, stick little notes in, use a notebook. This is a very well used copy of Stephen King's on writing. Um, talk to people about the book. Uh, book clubs are great for this. It, it helps you think more deeply about different things that you liked and didn't like and helps you really reflect on it, which is important. Reflect on the book, take something valuable away. Um, don't waste your time reading a whole book and then forgetting what it was about. Write down what you took away from it, one or two bullet points. Um, writing a, re a review helps as well, and it's also good for other people. And reading is, I, I don't know how many people are familiar with Hal Elrod, but meeting is, oh, thanks, Tabs. Meeting is one of the, um, one of the savers, the life savers, which are the six things he suggests you do in the first hour. You wake up early, an hour earlier in the morning, and then you, you spend six, you spend an hour doing six things, and that's, um, silence, which is like meditation, affirmations in front of the mirror, if you dare, uh, visualization, 
exercise, reading and scribing, which is journaling, basically. So uh, recommend him. He's good. So um, here are some things you should read because they're brilliant and weird and will give you some great ideas. Um, I put inside the whale, George Orwell's written loads of really fabulous, fabulous essays, not just his two most famous um 1984 and animal farm and actually my favorite of his books is down and out in paris and london which is uh, masterful so i really recommend that even if you read one book that's the book i would recommend out of these uh then non-fiction is good to read read something interesting outside of the i don't know if anyone's read this but it's really good johan ari is a great writer um, journalist. He was slightly shamed a few years ago, but he's, he's good. He's fine now. Um, and Lost Connections is brilliant. It's about depression and anxiety. A new spin on it. I put Gertrude Stein's <laughs> completely weird book here because it's good to read something totally different to what you're used to. And unless you're familiar with her already, I'm almost certain you, this will be totally different to what you're used to. Uh, Stephen King on writing and Lamott Bird by Bird are the two books about writing that I always suggest. Read about the craft, read about writing, read other people's advice. If you only read one of these, read Stephen King. If you want to read two, Anne Lamott. If you're up for a third, the Paris Review interviews, and there are eight series of these, um, are absolute gold dust for interesting tidbits about writers and the craft and, and what they do. So... <clears throat> And of course, explore your genre, because the more you read the stuff you want to write, the better you're going to get at it. Um, three authors I'd suggest to get a good range would be Kurt Vonnegut, because he's super imaginative. Mary Roach, who writes about um, science. My favourite nonfiction book is called Stiff, um, and it's about what happens to your body after you die. It's absolutely brilliant. And Gertrude Stein for a, a load of weirdness. Where are we up to? on the timer <laughs> okay so how are we all doing hanging in there i'm going to make you do something in a minute um we're up to prepare and plan so what i'd really like to know is what sort of spectrum we're dealing with here Thirty more minutes oh my goodness okay on a scale of super structured to, ah, someone help me, Marie Kondo, my brain, where do you work best? Let's say super structured is one and totally disorganized is five. Where do you like to have your writing brain or your working brain? Which end of this spectrum is best? Two, okay. Two. We've got some structure. Okay. I've got some tips. So this is good. This is, this matches. We're good. Um, the first and most important step for your purpose for using books to scale up your business is building your fan base. Get an audience, get your readers. Now, you might have these automatically if you've already got big email lists, if you've already got um a big uh social media groups and things like that um obviously check gdpr to make sure that that is allowed but you'll need readers and that's regardless of what publishing approach you take if you publish it yourself you're going to need people to tell about uh, to tell that you have published a book and that they should read it if you want to go through a publisher there's this really crazy loop that you need an agent to get a publisher and to get an agent you need a published book and you just go round and round and round what can cut through that loop is if you have an audience of 50,000 people they will be interested because they know then that you have your own audience for the books it's not all going to be down to them to distribute to, to promote so get your audience gather them somewhere it doesn't matter where they are Facebook YouTube TikTok um, Instagram, WeChat, email, some obscure forum, wherever it is, find them and bring them together. 
Um, I won't get into how to do that because that is not my <laughs> expertise by any stretch. Um, but it's definitely your first step. Now, after that happens, just checking this. Yeah, Stiff is a great book. I really recommend it. It made me completely rethink my end of life plan. Okay, so the first question, I, th I think there are four questions to ask yourself. The first is, why do you want to write a book? I think it's important to clarify that for yourself because it will help you write a great book. Um, could be to boost your business, which is what we're talking about here, to scale your business. Could be to gain credibility, to share your knowledge, build a tribe, start a movement, share an idea, position yourself, promote your company, make money. Um, how does this book fit with your business business ecosystem, as my uh, current author says, and your life? What do you want to achieve? Do you want to just become an author for credibility? Um, you just want a book on your shelf. Do you want to generate leads? Think about why you want to write a book. That will help you in this whole process. Um, Tony Morrison said, I wrote my first novel because I wanted to read it. Benjamin Disraeli said something similar. Um, it's good to know what your goal is because this is a big project like any other project. And I always suggest having smart goals to push you through this project. If this isn't your profession, if this is a, a, a product that you're going to make, have a smart goal in place, have a process in place, um, especially if you like to be structured. So uh, we already know it's achievable. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Uh, it's relevant. And you need to then do the other things. So how can you make it specific? Um, let's look at a goal. Simplest one is to make money. So let's say you stick an amount on that, a thousand euros. You want to make a thousand euros with this book. Um, what if it was building a tribe? You could say, I want a thousand new members of my Facebook group or 10 new clients. Um, if it was sharing your knowledge, you could uh, say three months after selling the book, you could send out a survey to the people who bought it. And your aim could be to have 100 people tell you they learned something. Um, gaining credibility might be a bit trickier, but you could aim for a certain number of keynote speeches next year or board membership or something like that. So think about specifically what you want to achieve with this and how you can measure it. Um, does anyone have any ideas? Any ideas? You can share as we go along. There's there's going to be four questions here. So as we go along, share your answers in the comments if you want, and we can chat about them. Um, could the next big thing here is the deadline. You need to give yourself a deadline, otherwise you're going to be writing this when you in ten years. There are lots of points in the book writing process you could pin a deadline to, and I suggest pinning them to all of those things. But pick one and work backwards. Could be having your first draft finished. Could be having your beta draft. Could be having your published version. Um, whichever one you choose, you can use that deadline and work backwards and create your timeline. And we'll come back to that in a bit. Um, if anyone wants to share a deadline and you have some accountability, I'm sure we can all do that. Um, but let's rush through this for now. Who are you writing for is the next one. We already talked about grabbing your people together in one place to, to give you a kind of readership to pull your fans together. Um, but like any form of communication, the most important thing is thinking about who it's for. And there's no right or wrong answer here. Your answer might be you. You might be the person it's for. Um, writing super great therapy. I know loads of people who have written a memoir to get trauma out or to remember something nice or um, just to process what's happened to them in the past. Um, that probably won't help you scale your business. Well, maybe it will. But if it's somebody else, who are they? Um, you can target groups of people just like you do in your business. And if you want to use a book to scale your business, it's probably a good idea to match those things up. Um, what do they need? What do they want? And what do you want them to think, feel and do? These are marketing questions. These are good things to um, guide you in trying to figure out who it's for. Uh, but remember one thing, this is, Nabokov is a very clever man. 
you can't please all of the people all of the time, don't try. Don't try and write a book that everyone's going to like because that book doesn't exist and you're not going to be able to write it. So let yourself off the hook. Um, if you've got an idea about your audience, share it in the chat. Tell us who you're writing for. I think it'd be really interesting to know. Um, the next thing is, what is your book about? Do you know? Does anyone have a topic? Are you all writing books? Tell me, tell us, share. I think it would be really interesting. Um, if you don't have a topic, but you know you want to write a book to scale your business, then you can think about things like, what do people ask you all the time as an expert? What do you know? What knowledge do you have that you want to share? Um, when are you most entertaining? What are you talking about when you're most entertaining? Um, how can you serve people? And you can also go to, you know, you're building your fan base all the while you're doing this. You can also ask them, crowdsource ideas from your community. What do people need? What do they want? What do they want you to tell them about? Um, this isn't something you have to sit in a shed and do all on your own. You can talk to people about it. It's like any other kind of product development process. Um, and the more you can flesh this out and be specific about the topic, the better it's going to work for you. Um, I won't spend long on this, but it's also good to really have an idea of what kind of book you want to write. Do you want it to be like quite small and sort of floppy pages? It's one of those floppy books. Or do you want it to be um, kind of a more austere looking hardback beast of a book? Literally, physically, what do you want your book to look like? How long is it going to be? What kind of structure is it going to be in? Really start to visualize that and it will help you in the process. And now, the, the skeleton is your big planning um, tool. Get all your ideas out of your head. That could be on a mind map, on a giant piece of paper, on individual post-its. Um, I did it on, on little tiny squares of paper that I've got kicking around here. And I sh sort of spread them all over the floor and started to group them in, in piles that made sense, put on some awesome music and, and make it physical. Writing is a physical craft. Um, as it starts to take shape, you'll see a structure forming and it might form naturally or it might be a structure that you already have in your head that you want to stick things to. Either way, there are no hard and fast rules. And actually, I think there are, there are, there are loads of different structures of books, but there are four that might help you. The one on the left is the standard chapter structure. Chapter one, two, three, four, five, all names of chapters, however you want. Um, very straightforward. The second one, you might have big sections in your book. There's a great book called The Five Invitations that I read recently. Also recommend that. Really interesting. Um, and that book is in big sections. And within those sections are separate chapters. Or you might have chapters with subchapters. Um, or you might be totally chaotic and decide not to have any chapters at all. And perhaps even very little punctuation, a bit like the road. Please don't do this. It's really, really hard to read. Um, but this is a, another place where you can make your own decisions. What do you want your book to look like? What do you imagine it looking like? It's all under your control. Um, I want to say something about fake news, which is just a, remind, a reminder that I don't want this to sound lectury. I don't want it to sound lectury, but everybody who writes a book. Um, book, books go out there for the duration. They are not as um, short lived as social media posts. Authors have a responsibility to put truthful, responsible information out there. And I think it's important as authors, regardless of what you're writing, to take that responsibility. So be critical of the sources that you use. As you're researching things, make sure you're checking who said them, why they said them, where they said them. Um, I published a, an article on Medium recently with sort of some simple steps to doing this. Uh, and one place that really bugs me in books, and you see this a lot, is misattributed quotes. Oh, my goodness. And this poor man, Mark Twain, said everything under the sun. Um, Quoteinvestigator.com is my top tip for this. You can check it. Uh, and, yeah, that's the best the best place to check quotes if you're not sure about them, or even if you are, always, I check every quote. So 
next step is writing. This is getting squeezed, huh? I'm sorry, this is like such a, can I share the article? Oh, thanks, Kathy. Hi. Just a post methodology. Oh, that's cool, Debs. Interesting. Oh, yeah, more people. Tell us about your books or the book you're thinking of writing. I want to hear about it. I want to read it. Oh, I get so excited by this. Okay. Um, right, we're going to talk about the actual writing. See, we've already been talking for like 40 minutes. Now we're only just getting down to write. And this is an important thing to know. When you're writing, I mean, when I'm writing, it usually looks like this. Because 90% of writing is thinking. It, you have to finish your thought process before you can successfully put it on paper. So uh, there are a few things to consider when you're writing. The first is we're going to break it down into whether, whether, how, when and what you write. So whether you write, I talked about being a ghostwriter. Know that there are ghostwriters out there. There are lots of ghostwriters and some of them are brilliant. Um, and if you are writing a book to scale your business, and it's something that you don't feel so personally attached to that you'd quite ha like the help of somebody else, reach out to them, find out about it. Um, I won't go into any details now, but if you want some information about how to work with a ghostwriter, what questions you should ask, just give me a shout. Um, the other option is to write it yourself, the first draft at least. And there, well, let's start with how. So I have a toolkit and like I said, this is a craft. It's a manual craft. That's how I see this. Um, and so I usually surround myself with my tools and literally set up shop here. Um, I have my favorite pencil, which is a black wing, which I can't see right now. I'm not well set up for writing today. Um, I have a pen. I usually have a quite a heavy ballpoint, but I quite like these uh, uni balls. They're nice and smooth as you write. Um, I have paper, usually a moleskin, but I mean, I've written chapters on like scraps of paper and napkins and stuff before so it really doesn't matter if you've got something to write with and something to write on you're all set um computer wise i'm sitting on a uh, macbook air right now i have an imac um, i prefer the imac if i'm working in scrivener and that's the software and i have something called a low free keyboard and i'm going to see if i can show you this now oh, i've just messed this up it sounds like a typewriter it's utterly joyful. It's quite hard to type with it, so I don't use it often, but it, it's really lovely to just get manual with the writing. Um, you wanna enjoy what you're doing, enjoy the process. Don't make it uncomfortable. Make it as comfortable as you possibly can. Software-wise, Microsoft Word is my go-to. A lot of people use uh, Google Docs, which is great, but I'm an absolute pedant when it comes to things like two, two spaces, shouldn't be there should be one or you know there's there's a comma missing or something it is much easier to see tiny tiny mistakes on microsoft word um for getting the first draft out i use something called scrivener which is not very expensive and absolutely the best investment you can make if you're writing a book in my opinion uh because the way it's structured is it's in chapters or you can you can build chapters you can have areas for research all sorts of stuff like that um, and then finally is, oh, da, 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 da. cool, cool, cool. I'm just looking at these things. Thanks for sharing the link, Veronica. Um, the last thing is dictation. And uh, I use a combination of Audio Hijack, Audacity, and Otter.ai. I have a professional account with Otter. It's $10 a month. I do hundreds of interviews with people so I always have to transcribe stuff so it's totally worth it for me but there are free versions of things out there that you can use to dictate and transcribe and we'll come to that in a minute um so the next thing we've done the how next thing is when when do you write you need to figure this out for yourself because everyone's different there's not you know i'm not going to say to you you should write between 9 and 10 a.m every day it's going to be fantastic i don't know that everyone has a different sort of energy map throughout the day um and you may have already looked at that if you haven't i totally recommend it when are you most energetic when are you most focused and when are you feeling most creative um Literally rate yourself on a scale of one to five. Do it by the hour or by the half hour and map out and then and then plant your writing at those times that is going to work best. 
um, block it out in your calendar, make sure nothing else gets in there. You might want to do it for an hour a day. You might want to do it for two hours a day. Um, it also, this all comes back to the maths as well. Um, got another nice Toni Morrison quote here. She started writing early in the morning because of her kids and then realized actually that's the best time to write. So that happens. Sylvia Plath famously <laughs> always started her day at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. A bit unnecessary. But sure, I mean, you know, whatever works for you. My, my sweet spot seems to be between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m., unfortunately. So you can get you can do some mathematics if you're not sure to get really structured. Let's say you want to write um, a 60,000 word business book. And let's say on a roll, you write 600 words an hour. Oh, that's on a roll. You know, Hemingway used to write 500 words a day. So let's not set goals here. But let's say you do because it's easy calculation. Then that makes 100 hours of writing. So you can either say, OK, I'm going to spend 100 hours on the first draft. How long is that going to take me then? I want to work. I want to write an hour a day, five days a week. That's going to be 20 weeks. And therefore, that's my deadline. Or you can work backwards and say, I want to finish it in 60 days. Therefore, I need to work this many hours a day on these days. Do a bit of maths. If you're really structured, that could certainly help you. Um, if you like to go all in and do something really crazy, uh, NaNoWriMo is really fun. It gives you lots of... Uh, sort of prompts and support and the idea is that it's national novel writing month they are all about writing a whole novel or book in november so you write fifty thousand words in 30 days about 1700 words a day um this you might want to think about rituals i'm going to skip through some of this because it's not all that necessary at this point you might want some rituals so for the big one what are you going to write how do you get your knowledge from your head onto the page? And this is something that people ask me a lot. Um, it's easier than they think. Stick to your skeleton uh, because actually the key to organizing your knowledge is to, uh, the key to sharing your knowledge and making it usable is to organize it. Oh my God, 10 more minutes. I know, Veronica, sorry. I'm here. Audio. Sorry, yes, audio hijack, that's the one. Scrivener, S-C-R-I-V-E-N-E-R. -E -E um, we're going to skip this case study, actually, and just write important things. Uh, but I do want to say this, you know, that there are lots of reasons, there are lots of ways to write, there are lots of styles, all that sort of stuff. Um, I would say the best thing you can do is use your own voice. This is a mirror. It's very hard to include a picture of a mirror. But just imagine your face in that circle. Um, whatever you do, if you are authentically yourself, if you write with your own voice, it's easier because you don't have to think about it. It just comes out as you. Um, it requires the least effort. And it's the most enjoyable to read. People like to hear people speaking. We are a story-driven society. And people want to hear your voice. The more you write, the easier this gets. But at the beginning, you might want to record your voice. Um, like I said, you can record it on anything, stick it through a, a transcription service and you'll get your voice in black and white and that'll give you somewhere to start. Um, I'm going to skip through this. The key to writing is just to start. This is Hemingway's advice. Write one true sentence. Write the truest sentence you can think of um, and just get going. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to pause, but I'm going to say two things. <laughs> I have so much fun with Rewrite and edit. Um, this, according to most novelists, is where the magic happens. Um, the, the point of your first draft is to get it on paper. The point of the rewrite is to get it to be good. Um, when you're editing, the rewrite is really shuffling big chunks of content, making sure that you're not missing any big gaps, making sure that you're not leaving questions unanswered, or you are, if that's the point. Um, editing, you're looking for things like clarity, completeness, consistency, and active writing, getting down to the next level. If you want to get down to the very next level, you need a proofreader who's going to be 
really picky about where that comma goes, about where that apostrophe goes, about how you spell that word in chapter two versus chapter 11. Um, and those people, we are out there. So find us. Um, at this point, you might want to send it to beta readers and get their feedback. And there are there are lots of ways you can ask for feedback that's going to be useful for you. Um, namely, give them a list of questions to answer rather than just saying, what did you think? Because if you know them, they'll probably say, yeah, it was really good. And what use is that? That's not helpful feedback. Um, as promised, this section is suitably squeezed, but I do want to mention these two routes to publishing, um, self-publishing and traditional publishing. Of course, there's lots of other stuff going on around that, but think about this before you start. Think about what your outcome is going to be. One can also, you know, self-publishing can lead to traditional publishing in the end. Um, both have pros and cons. You need to find the thing that matches you best. And if you're writing a book to scale your business, perhaps your business can pay for the book. Um, I can send you this stuff anyway. That's absolutely fine. Uh, and then the formats, ebook, printed, audio, serialized. You can play around with this. Serialized books are massively underused. The old French Revolution writers used to serialize books in newspapers, and I love that. Stephen King did one, actually. I think The Green Mile was serialized. Anyway, lots of fun. So then there was an epilogue, which basically said, writing's really hard, and I'm going to finish with a Seth Godin quote. Here's the thing. The book that will change your life the most, unnecessary comma, is the book you write. So whew, there we go. I will write an article. What's going to be in the book, my article? It's not going to be 8,000 words that it should be. Sorry. Yeah. Yay, Veronica. She stopped talking. <laughs> Six minutes to go. Shall I finish? Shall I cut? I'm going to cut that so that you can. Yeah, there we go. <sighs> Sorry if I, I talked to... too fast. Did I talk too fast? <laughs> I, I missed out loads of stuff. Anyway, no, I mean, I, I you know, do the same, so. <laughs> this is usually a two day course. So I <clears throat> squeezed it. So actually, um, I'm thinking about writing a book and definitely I want to follow this course. So if you, maybe it's good to share here or we're going to share afterwards uh, on social media all the data about your course. So if anyone else, I saw a couple of, I know uh, uh, Lara, you wrote and a couple of other people. Yara actually just finished the book. Uh, but a lot of people mentioning here, they are considering writing a book or in the process of writing a book or just finished the book. Uh, definitely will be interesting. You kind of actually answered the questions while, while they were asked. So <laughs> any last minute uh, question you want to ask everyone? What I would like to say, because uh, I think Lara was the one uh, asking about Goodreads. And I do have that, but I have to admit I'm very bad at updating it. However, I know I'm part of Lucy's book club bucket list book club yeah yes, I, meant, maybe. I meant to put a slide on that and we haven't actually met the lockdown lockdown the club um and my brain but yeah bucket so i run bucket list bookshop which is an online bookshop and we sell secondhand books that are pre-owned and reloved and the the kind of fun bit is we only stock books by the top 100 authors of all time as determined by a semi-objective <laughs> massive piece of research I did um, that pulls together all the major international prizes um, weighted and uh, um, sales for major English speaking countries because I'm only dealing with English at the moment capacity wise um, sales reader ratings expert reviews and uh and awards um and it pulls everything together and produces the top 100 authors of all time i'm currently in the process of trying to make that look less like a list of dead white men so if anyone knows of any brilliant i, I have a list of, of book prizes and things to include but if anyone knows of any great sources please do share with me um i really want to make it a little bit more interesting you know i mean everyone loves him anyway well they don't most people don't like but the list is amazing um, but yeah the list is great and, and we 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 um we read some really cool we've read some really cool books haven't we we did and they were actually, actually the, the, the really <laughs> the most memorable one for me was we read uh, our, our meeting about Toni Morrison's uh, God Help the Child, God, wasn't it? I was actually thinking about that. It was on the day 
think she passed away. Our book we club. We met in the same oh. day, yes. That was so. Oh. So I'm getting goosebumps, actually. <laughs> Great book. But yeah, so we, we read one. books. And um, I'm in a few different book, book clubs, actually, just to try and... I like to broaden my reading horizons and read stuff that surprises me. So thanks for all the brilliant book recommendations. I'm going to add them all to my list. I have a very big want to read list on Goodreads, so you can totally dive into that. That's kind of an interesting one. Perfect. <sighs> so, guys, we have two more minutes. Any question from the, the people that are about to write a book or they're thinking about writing a book? Or... While we're waiting, I'm going to tell you something funny. So on, in, in one of these Paris Reviews interviews, I, I'm obsessed with these. They're completely brilliant. Uh, Georges Simenon, which is, he, he's one of the, I probably said that completely wrong. I'm not a good French speaker. Um, he's one of the world's most prolific writers was. And uh, he wrote, I think, upwards of 350 books under a dozen pseudonyms. His, his process for writing is fantastic. He writes for 11 days straight, maximum between five and 11 days I think it was um and he because he just has to get the book finished and he does an entire book in that time and what he does first because it's it, it really drains him because he gets into the characters and he really puts his entire body and soul into this writing process um he visits his doctor first and his doctor takes all his vitals and gives him a thumbs up if he's good to write. And then he goes and writes. And then he visits his doctor again afterwards to make sure he's still breathing. Uh, and then his doctor tells him how long he has to wait before he does it again. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying this in the present tense, obviously in the past. But anyway, I thought that's, that was fantastic. That's an interesting. <laughs> so, like, if you need some motivation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there, there are different ways of doing this. You can spread it out over a decade, your book, and uh, write 200 words a day, or you can just do a George Simenon and sit down for a week and make your heart rate go up. I'm actually a big fan uh, uh, of, of deadlines and the SMART method. Of course, you do need to be flexible, but if you don't set up your goals and you don't have a deadline, from my experience, you're never going to do it. Yeah. So uh, maybe it will take you a little bit longer until you decide those deadlines. But the yeah. moment you have them, I think uh, very rarely you are not going to succeed. Yeah. Get accountability. It's like anything yes. else. Exactly. A deadline will just sail straight past you unless somebody's going to hold you to it. So there we and go. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks for your patience with my technical incapacity. And Actually, my was good. It was good. Very fast. Perfect. Thank you, Deb. Uh, feel free to please Thanks, hold Deb. on the rest of the conf uh, conference. Yes, the hands. <laughs> we are uh, starting new sessions right now. So please do join the other ones. And Lucy is still here. Make sure you, you reach out to her. And don't forget you have the, the messing, messaging possibility. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Lovely to see you. Enjoy the rest of the conference. And thanks, Veronica. It's great so far. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank <laughs> you.